Hey, all my YouTube people. This is about the fifth video I've made, so we're going to try to make it quick and cut to the point. I got, <laughs> got some orange citrus mint there. About to plant it outside and let it go wild. My strawberry plants. Got one strawberry off of them this year, but the plants have been multiplying, so I guess that's a good sign. I'll go out to the yard real quick. Let's see if I can get interrupted one more time. <laughs> Easter, my girls planted flowers all over the yard, so we're expecting all different kinds of flowers to come up throughout the yard. Last fall, I seeded my yard with beans, tomatoes, and whatever I'd grown last year, and all that is coming back up. Beans, pumpkins, squashes, tomatoes. I bought two hybrids. I bought an early girl tomato, and I bought a big beef. The big beef is in the backyard, and that's the early girl. My onion is seeding, one of them. I've got acorn squashes. I also planted them in the front. And beds here. Right there. And over by the steps. I even left some of the weeds this year. <laughs> got several bean plants everywhere several different kinds of tomatoes. I'm not sure what they all are. There could be grape, cherry, uh, black creme, a uh, little random assortment. I got a good tomato bush growing right there. I'm about to bring back all these pumpkins. I got several pumpkins and squash plants in here. I'm about to bring all those out of here. Move them around. I might keep a couple of them. I planted the Cocozilla squash in the front yard and a little bit in the couple in the back. I planted acorn squash all around this garden area in the back here. I took out my box, made a whole rock bed that goes alongside the whole yard here. This now is my compost pile. I've got a pumpkin growing out of it. A chili pekin along the side. Got watermelons growing, marigolds, several tomatoes in this bed, all mixed up, different flowers here and there. Got two real good tomato bushes here and there, which I'm about to separate one of them, move them over here, give them a little more space. But yeah, it's got marigolds and random flowers all through my beds. Like I said, also with the girls planting flowers all through Easter, there's all different kinds of flowers coming up. I mean, hollyhocks, poppies, morning glories, there could be anything all in these seed mixes, little seed patches there, like that. There's zinnias in this bed, along with lots of onions. Eight cabbages, got them out of there. Left some in after I cut them. Let one go to flower. Got, like I said, random pumpkins. My wife just planted flowers all down this bed. So here in a few weeks, there should be flowers coming up. Pretty good in there. We mulched. Put down a layer of straw. Crossed our whole walking path. Only cost about $30. Bought three good bales of alfalfa straw to lay down to help retain water help keep weeds back I got dinosaur kale the dinosaur kale plant got about shoot five and a half foot tall this year yeah it's a monster and below there little tomato plants coming up still got broccoli growing all over broccoli plant seeding out right here right next to the kale and this kale I put on some seed pods and you look at some of those seed pods there they're longer than my finger just about as long as my finger so we'll have lots of kale next year this fall there's more broccoli I got the one broccoli plant it grew all last year I chopped it in the fall 
the spring it sprouted back another little branch and so I don't know if it's a perennial or an annual now <laughs> we got beans back in here behind my water tank we had to put off our Colorado trip so we ain't getting to move to Colorado right quite yet so we're gonna keep going with our garden our sage our sage is flowering right now Our big flower plant starting to come back. I don't know exactly what kind of flower it is. More seedlings that the girls planted flowers in on Easter. My other little dinosaur kale, my potted dinosaur kale, it only got about three and a half foot, maybe right at three foot eight. And I think, well, no, actually, it's still in a pot, so yeah, it only got about three foot. More beans. Kept some of the weeds just because these weeds right here are actually edible and they're real soft they don't have no spines on them or nothing they got a little bit of what looks like a rough edge to them but other than that they're real soft real decent green to have for a weed I got more of that Pocazilla squash I got Black Beauty squash and that still needs to be planted it's still in the cup uh, ginger. I brought my ginger. I grew it inside this winter. And brought it out. I clipped the tips. I don't know if that was good or bad. It hasn't grown much after I've done that, which I didn't want it to grow too much after I did it. So I don't know. We'll see how it does with the root, the actual ginger root. Here's the big beef tomato, a hybrid I bought. Uh, and it's already set and tomatoes we've got three tomato sets on there already hopefully I can keep it cool enough more beans I have a little clover bush here a little clover it got some yellow, little yellow flowers on it looks like the shamrock it's got actually even have a four four leaf clover there try to get it into focus good yeah but yeah it looks pretty I like those little yellow flowers on it put my hummingbird feeder up hummingbirds come through here and they get out these purple flowers They'll even just drink the water off the leaves. Spider plant back in there. There's still cabbages here and there growing. The hummingbirds like this purple flower here too. Planted me a pineapple this year. We'll see how that goes. It looks like it's starting to do real good, starting to put off some growth, so making me excited. the vine busted through the fence here my chili pekin plant started coming back I have chili pekins going I planted some more of that cocazilla squash more squash beans 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 squash squash and a little threshold my kids fingerprints in it Another little garden box. I started got some pumpkins, beans, dill, some squash. It's doing real good. I'm about to separate some of it because this one here is big. I think it's a big old pumpkin plant. There's all kinds of still squashes and pumpkins wanting to grow in there. Um, like I said, with the dill, it started sprouting up. I started working on this. A few weeks ago, I've always I've had the framework for a while, but I just put up the door frame, went around the edges with the tin skirting. Eventually, I'll probably try to have it a greenhouse. Right now, it's just a shade hut. Got the shade wrapping going around the sides just to help give some shade and help block the wind. We got these garden delicious apples 
growing. I bought them as root stocks, the Garden Delicious Apple, along with the almond tree, dwarf almond. I put these little racks in here to help keep the cats out of here until I get the structure fully enclosed. We've got blueberry bushes growing, doing good. Like I said, I bought all these root stocks in the mail, the blueberry bushes, the almond tree, and the garden dwarf apple. The shipping and handling was only $4. <laughs> I got these pots there at Lowe's. They're those Jack Daniels half barrels. Cut them in half. Well, they cut them in half. You just fill them with growing medium and we'll get to work. So, hopefully, we'll have some apples and some almonds. My wife's been making almond milk lately. We really like that, and it seems a little bit more convenient than having to buy milk that comes from a cow. From my compost I mixed in here, there's little pump, little carrots and little pumpkins and stuff growing. So we're about to give those off to one of my buddies. He needs some pumpkin plants and I've got plenty of them. So we're going to give those off to him. We'll check out the native life going on. I keep lots of these flowers growing around my yard. People think they're weeds and cut them down, pull them out. There's white rock daisies. I got Tohoka daisies in the back. Along with other native flowers which I don't really know the names to but they're very beautiful they're not spiny or stickery if they have stickers on them I usually pull them for the kids but like those nah we leave them I like to walk around my yard barefooted even though we're in the desert like I said I keep a good mixture of all the different wildlife we've got mesquite bushes we've got these kinds of bushes which they're really pretty and the ladybugs love them so do the bees any kind of pollinator it just loves I mean it just puts off a whole stock of flowers orange and reds and purples and yeah. a lot of people pull them like I said they keep the ladybugs around like I said with the mesquite trees and even over there there's a good patch of them in the school's property like I said it keeps beneficial insects around they look like they got a bunch of black-eyed Susans over there too I might be wrong but from over here no those just them yellow daisies planted me a cactus you gotta have a cactus up on your border that way I know where my property line is <laughs> we've got poor man's pepper grass growing like I said I've been learning a lot about the weeds lately too and a lot of the weeds are very beneficial and good to keep around or what people think are weeds <laughs> there's a good one too that one's a spiny sucker mm. like I said I was trying to make it quick I've made about five videos and been interrupted every single time we got more of that Cocozilla squash. The pond's been running low. It's been getting pretty warm. The garden really didn't even die off this year in some spots. Like I said, I grew greens all through the winter. Cabbages and kales. Crown of thorn bush. See, alongside my property here, I keep it pretty, pretty native and natural. To the school over there, I got lots of that poor man's pepper grass. I'm watching uh, Green Dean eat the weeds. Yep. <laughs> There's some basil that never even died off. It don't look great, but it never died stayed flowering all through our winter season so we didn't have much of a winter season and obviously you can tell it's a vent from under my house so it gets a little bit of warm air I got another Cocozilla squash planted right next to my forsyntha bush my basil garden the basil garden don't usually come up until uh, June July once it starts getting really hot that's when the basil comes out more of that Cocozilla squash 
Another first scent the bush. Again with the squash. And the squash and the beans. Growing together. It's about time to cut my grass. Here's another weed that is edible. It's got very smooth. Like I said a lot of people look at this stuff and think it's gonna poke them and hurt them, but there's a lot of them that are very smooth textured. It looks like it got some spikes, but it don't. It don't hurt you. I don't pull all my weeds. I keep some of them. I let my grass go to seed. It's about time to mow it, start watering it, and take care of the grass. I usually don't take care of the grass until summer starts kicking off real good. For now, it looks kind of deadish, but that's all right. I keep most of my spring work in the back. Well, it looks like I made a whole video without any interruptions this time. My, didn't, my car didn't run out of memory. I didn't run out of batteries. People didn't come out and start talking to me. <laughs> Which I don't mind, but when you're on your fourth video, you go, Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I don't feel like cutting it and editing all this stuff out all the time. I'd rather just make a video, post it, and that's what you got. <laughs> But I figure I'd give everybody a little update of our garden, how our yard and everything is looking this year. Lots of flowers, lots of bees. The honey locust trees are in blossom. So, I mean, these trees right now, I don't know if you can hear, but they are full of bees. And they stay full of bees until those flowers stop blooming. But anyway, we got more gardening to do. Lots more, lots more. Went ahead and bought that boogie brew filter John Kohler had been talking about. And I bought me a TDS meter, a HANA meter where I can measure the TDS and the parts per million and the electric conductivity and the pH and everything. And I'll tell you what, that boogie brew filter does its job. It does a real good job. After testing it with my meter, I think our city water was at 823 parts per million on the total dissolved solids after I tested and put that on there that dropped it down almost to about a hundred hundred and fifty and then sometimes it even comes out the hose at zero so that filter does a real good job of taking out all the total dissolved solids chlorine and the fluoride yeah I recommend those if you got not that great water I definitely recommend the boogie brew filters if you can get them right now I've heard lots of people have been having a hard time getting a hold of them but then like I said I even make my own filter I got a pre filter that I've made uh, you can unscrew it take it apart put it back together it's made I just stuff it full of charcoal some hydrogen some hydrogen and some charcoal and that filters out decently. It does. It's a good pre-filter. But every since I got them filters, I've been noticing a big, big difference in the yard. I've been dropping the pH down because I think when I was watering before, if I had it watered with nutrients, it'd be about between 7.9 and 9 on the pH, and that is way too hot to be watering your plants like that. So after I got that meter, it really talked me into getting a filter, <laughs> which that's how it goes. But like I said, you will see lots of benefit from it. I mixed up my first batch of compost tea a couple days ago, put it out. I haven't compost, put compost tea on the garden in, since November. So this is... about four months of not putting anything down. I've mixed a little bit of compost and a little bit of mulch in, but nothing real big, nothing nutrient wise until a couple days ago. Well, that's what our garden's looking like this year. Y'all take care and we'll see y'all again pretty soon. Hopefully there'll be a lot more plants. <laughs> Yeah.
Y'all have a good one. God bless.